After months of barely resisting the North Korean assaults, U.S. forces in Busan, the last South Korean bastion during the early phase of the Korean War, were ready to attempt their first counterattack. The U.S. forces were untrained and limited in numbers. Still, recent reinforcements had allowed them to move to an offensive position. More importantly, they received four M26 Pershing tanks, and the armored vehicles gave them the courage to fix the Soviet T-34's tanks that the North Koreans were using. The Soviet T-34 had been a significant issue for U.S. and South Korean troops at the outset of the war, as the American M-24s had been systematically blown to pieces by the T-34's powerful 85mm guns. The American forces now prepared to take No Name Ridge, and strategically placed three out of their four tanks in the middle of the narrow road. If the tanks were destroyed by the T-34s as quickly as their predecessors, at least their burning husks would provide an obstacle for the Soviet tanks. The battle started some distance ahead of the curve where the American tanks sat. U.S. forces clashed with North Korean ones, and soon the colossal Soviet tanks were deployed to disperse the rebellious attack. The Americans then started to retreat, hoping to lead the four Soviet vehicles into a surprise attack as the North Korean troops could not see around the curve, and they were not expecting the American M-26s. A tank battle of epic proportions that would shape the war's course then ensued, as the Soviets advanced along the curve to suddenly be confronted by three American tanks they had never seen before. As they fired on each other for the first time, one tank would prove to be much superior to the other. Unprepared for War North Korea's decision to invade South Korea had been sudden and overwhelming. The South's government and people were not ready for an attack of that scale. Even when backed by American forces, the limited resources the U.S. had in the peninsula would not be sufficient to help the southern troops. By 1950, U.S. presence in Korea was limited. After World War II, many of its divisions had disbanded, and the units that remained in the Asian country were both inexperienced and technologically outdated. The sudden onslaught led by the North Koreans took advantage of the South's disarray while exploiting the fact that they possessed Soviet technology that mostly surpassed the American resources. In just a couple of months, North Korea conquered 90% of Korea's territory and forced the South Koreans and American troops into a tiny corner in the port city of Busan, where they stood their ground and bravely endured wave after wave of North Korean assaults while desperately waiting for reinforcements. American strategists had provided almost no armored vehicles to support the troops stationed in South Korea, as they believed that the country's harsh topography made the use of tanks highly ineffective. But the North would teach the U.S. troops a hard lesson, as they deployed over 120 Soviet-supplied T-34s to spearhead the invasion, and the only armored vehicle that the American troops had to slow down the incoming Soviet juggernauts was the T-24. Underweight Both the American T-24 and the Soviet T-34 were developed around the same time during the first years of World War II. The 31-ton Soviet vehicle was classified as a medium tank and was equipped with an impressive 85mm main gun. In contrast, the American T-24 was designed as a light-armored vehicle weighing only 18 tons and armed with a 75mm cannon. American authorities believed that Korea's mountainous terrain made it impossible for any relevant tank warfare to occur and thought that the lighter the tank, the better. However, at the outbreak of the war, North Korean troops would not only prove heavier tanks could be used in Korea, but they would also show how useless light tanks were against them. Although impressive for a light tank, the T-24's 75mm gun turned out to be primarily harmless against the two-inch thick armored plates mounted on the T-34's hull. Unfortunately for the American soldiers, the one-inch armor fitted on their light tanks was punctured like a sheet of paper when impacted by the Soviet tank's 85mm rounds. In other words, the American tank was wholly outclassed and outweighed by its Soviet counterpart. And as the North Koreans advanced southbound, they would leave numerous husks of destroyed T-24s as evidence of their superiority. A Fateful Discovery As a whole, America had much more combat capabilities than most Asian countries put together. But in 1950, their troops were dispersed throughout the globe, and they had no way to quickly reinforce their South Korean posts. Meanwhile, North Koreans were advancing south at an alarming rate, and if the American and South Korean troops could not slow down the attack, 
The entire peninsula could be lost before the US and the UN could reinforce the area. Still, as much as the American troops in Pusan desperately needed heavier tank support, the units they needed would take weeks to arrive. However, as luck would have it, just as the 1st Marine Provisional Brigade arrived at Pusan to reinforce the scarcely holding defenses, US military personnel uncovered four dusty World War II M26 heavy tanks inside a depot in Tokyo. The vehicles were slightly damaged, but repairing them and sending them to Pusan would be faster and more feasible than waiting weeks for a tank division to arrive. The tanks were quickly prepared for service to provide a counter to the enemy's T-34s. The two armored vehicles had never met in battle before, as their originating nations were allies when they were first deployed. Still, American troops in Pusan hoped the M-26's 90mm main cannon and copious armor plates would prove a match for the Soviet medium tank. Leveling the Playing Field The M-26 Pershing heavy tank featured a set of characteristics much more apt to tackle a confrontation with the Soviet T-34s. To start, the Pershing weighed over 40 tons, due primarily to the 4-inch armor mounted on the vehicle. The T-34 had double the armor of the M-24, but this time the M-26 had two times the armor of the T-34. South Korean and American troops in Busan hoped the hefty steel plates would be enough to render the T-34's 85mm gun useless. As if 4-inch armor plates weren't enough, the Pershing tanks had been fitted with additional plates in the vehicle's front section, giving them a tremendous advantage when facing other armored vehicles. And on top of that, the American heavy tanks were fitted with a powerful 90mm main gun that seemed more promising than the M24's 75mm cannon. However, not everything was ideal for the American crews manning the old Pershings. The tanks had been hurriedly repaired, and they suffered from constant overheating and many other engine performance issues. In addition to their mechanical shortcomings, the American tanks were cumbersome and slow, making them hard to maneuver and deploy in the rugged Korean terrains. Despite all the Pershing's advantages, the incoming battle was not assured, and if the American troops wanted to succeed in their first attempt at a counter-strike, they had to maximize their tank's strengths while diminishing their weaknesses. Preparing for Battle North Korean pressure on Pusan had steadily diminished as American reinforcements improved, and by August, they were ready to throw the North Koreans back. The 5th Marine Division was tasked to take the Obongni Ridge, or as the troops knew it, No Name Ridge. Supporting them was Lieutenant Granville Sweet, commander of the small platoon with the four tanks. Initial fighting had fallen on the infantry units, and by sundown, the soldiers retreated to set up defenses for the night. The tanks also withdrew to refill, but they received the urgent code Flash Purple, signifying an imminent tank strike on their position. Just as the tanks were finishing refueling, Lieutenant Sweet ordered them forward to meet the incoming T-34s head-on. He designated a remote location in the highway ahead and placed three of the tanks side by side. If the mighty T-34 proved to be too much for the old Pershings, their wrecks would block the road and derail the enemy assault. Due to a mechanical fault, Sweet's tank could not join the other three, so he stayed back. The designated defense location was placed on a curve in the road, and the advancing enemy tanks would be well within the range of the M26s before they could spot them. Down the road, four T-34s trailed closer, overwhelming American infantry and almost cutting lines between two different platoons. American troops used bazookas and rifles to try to damage the incoming juggernauts, all to no avail. The American efforts only managed to set the T-34's external fuel tanks ablaze, but they continued to advance towards the curve. As the four burning tanks came around the corner, they were suddenly met with three M26 tanks. The stage was set for a historic tank clash. Engulfed by fire The American troops used the element of surprise to strike first, with Technical Sergeant Cecil Fullerton's A-34 tank using its main gun. Fullerton complained to Gunner Sergeant Stanley Tarnovsky after the shot appeared to miss the target, but Tarnovsky was confident. He hadn't missed, and his rounds had wholly penetrated the Soviet T-34. The Soviet vehicle was then forced to stop in the middle of the road. Meanwhile, as the American tanks fired their initial rounds, the muzzle flashes from their main gun set their own hulls aflame. American personnel had spilled fuel over the Pershing's decks in their rushed effort to finish refueling, and now all eight tanks were engulfed by fire. With one Soviet tank disabled, a second T-34 moved around, just to be immediately met by 90mm rounds. One of the shots struck its main turret, causing it to lose control and fire on the side of the hill, 
completely missing its mark. The third Soviet T-34 desperately fired back at the Pershings from behind the wrecks of its two comrades. However, the smaller rounds bounced harmlessly off the M-26's armor plates. The Pershings returned the fire, hitting the enemy vehicle seven times and completely disabling the unit again. The fear-struck crew abandoned its vehicle and fled to the nearby jungle, but the American troops soon neutralized them. After witnessing the fate of the other T-34s, the last Soviet tank attempted to retreat in a panic. Still, it was intercepted and destroyed by an anti-tank infantry unit. The victorious Pershings then continued firing at the disabled T-34s until they were completely obliterated. America had just won its first counteroffensive, and the T-34's aura of invulnerability was forever shattered. From then on, American and South Korean forces would advance north unhindered and supported by their powerful and superior tanks. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell for more exciting history-inspired content. Also, check out our other Dark Documentaries channels. You'll surely find something to enjoy.